Hey, what's happening, guys? This is my Micro Bit X6, which you saw in a video a couple weeks ago. If I remember, I'll put a uh, link to it, you know, somewhere. Anyway, this is a simple little, very low power, what's known as a QRP ham radio. And it is a pretty nice little radio, but it's low power. And one of the things that drives me nuts is it is incredibly slow. This up screen update is just crazy. So, like, if I put in a frequency here, like, let's put in some real winners here at the Mo Maritime Mobile Network. So, 14, 300. You see how long it took the screen to redraw? And if I want to tune with the VFO, the Variable Frequency Oscillator, Look how long it takes me to go one kilohertz. Now there is a, a thing where you can touch this here and now it'll go at a hundred kilohertz at a time, but who wants to tune at a hundred kilohertz at a time? I want to tune at like 10. So anyway, there is a uh, modded firmware for this from a guy named Dr. Ian Lee, KD8. CEC and it works alongside a different screen called the Nexteon and that's this guy right here which should fit in there quite nicely but what's beautiful about the Nexteon is it has a built-in microprocessor on it so it can handle a lot of the work that the Arduino Nano in here is currently handling so, we are going to try and uh, open this up, remove the Raduino board and the screen, wire up the Nexaton screen, and update the firmware. At least that's the plan. Honestly, this last week or so, just about every video I've tried to start has turned out badly. So, I have a... Uh, yeah, you haven't seen any videos. So, hopefully, this will go better than the last week's worth of videos. Okay, we are going to start by getting the firmware we need. And you can find it here at hamski.com KD8CEC Amateur Radio. And we're going to come up here to where it says Ubitix CEC Firmware 1.2. And we're going to roll on down. And we are going to download this zip file here and the Nexaton files and we're also going to need another thing called Xloader so I think I just got it by typing in Xloader just like that and you can find it at GitHub you come up here to the green arrow where it says code and you're gonna download the zip once you have them, I just have them here on the desktop. There are the CEC files. We need the version 5, and we need this one right here. This is the Ubitix V5 CEC V1.200 NX Hex. This is for the Nexaton without the S meter because it doesn't have the S meter circuitry yet. And then this is the X loader program. Let's, uh, Let's see what happens if we bring her on up. It's the first time I've run it, so. Okay. So we have a Nano 328. I'm not sure what COM port it's on. It's supposed to be 115.2. But we will do that here. Let me get everything set up. So here's the back of my Ubitix with the very nice uh, added fan by B-Blood. Thank you, B-Blood. Here's our antenna port, power port, USB port. So I'm going to plug in a USB mini cable into this USB port. And hopefully the computer will hear it and recognize it. But I don't hear anything. Not that that means anything. 
All right, I checked the my device manager. Device manager does not see it. Let's see if we plug in the, uh, the power. Turn it on. I think device manager just found it. Yeah, it's on 14. I know that simply because I have my uh, Zygu G20 on COM12 and COM4 is something running in the computer. So COM14 is where it's at. So now we should be able to run Xloader. Our hex file is on the desktop under CEC. It is this one. 328, COM port is 14. And this is supposed to be 115200. Okie doke. Let's see what happens. says uploading well it's been like 30 seconds for an 84 kilobyte file so I'm not quite sure what is going on here but it definitely all seems locked up so we'll wait a couple more minutes okay even though this is the direct connection to the arduino it looks like we're going to need to remove the arduino from this so that's our next step you know, we get these screws out there's just four of them let's try and plug it don't need any trouble there Whoops, <laughs> bumped the camera as usual. I'm the biggest klutz I know. All right, well, I mean, the, the Raduino has to come out anyway. So it's not really a problem. Get that off of there. Yeah, you see, it's just connected here like this, but it says it needs to be removed, so. I'll remove it. Now, if you're tempted to replace your Raduino in here with one of your own Arduino Nanos, because that's really all it is, make sure you solder the pins on the bottom side. Otherwise, you'll short everything out when you put it in. All right, I just plugged it in. It, it dingle-dongled. So it should be good. Let's uh, get you up here on the computer screen. I'm gonna run Xloader again. Let's see, you see, it's everything I want. Let's just make sure we have the right file here. It is the NX without the S on it. This is the uh, Nano 328, column 14, it said, on five two hundred, and let's go upload. I don't see any uploading. There's no activity lights here. Hmm. All right, at fifty seven six, it appears to be working. You can see it says 30548 bytes uploaded. So there are my settings for Xloader. Of course, your COM port will almost certainly be different. All right, I've removed the Arduino board from the Ubitix. You can see it lives right there. And I'm just going to move it out of the way. 
All right, I'm going to remove the touch screen by hopefully loosening these nuts. These nuts. <laughs> I cracked myself up. I really hope I've done everything right for this project because, man, like I said this last week or so has just been rough. All right, I'm going to get those off. So the nuts are five millimeter. This little five millimeter nut driver just works, happened to work really great. Get them out of there. And then we can remove the touch screen. Ta da! And then this guy is going to go on here. But as you can see, there is an issue. It doesn't really line up over here. It's not off by much, but man, it is off by enough to make a, a world of difference. So we'll take care of that. Don't worry. All right. So I plugged in the cables and it's just for um, power ground and uh, serial. And it needs to come back over this way. So I'm going to tack these down here on the board using some Kapton tape. Hopefully that will help to keep everything nice and neat and tucked out of the way. At least that's my hope. I know you can't see it. I'll have it out in, where you can see it in one second. Okay, a little something like that. And then we'll do it on here again at the end. Well, there it is. The Nexaton screen is mounted. And if you look in here, you can see it goes from the top, red, then black, then space, space, yellow. And then from the bottom, it is 14, 13, 12, 11 is blue so that's everything in there now this whoops pet my uh my heat sink there this goes back in here Have all the pins properly lined up. Okay. Let's see what we can do here. All right. Everything is in except for the red we know. Red we know is back in place. USB cable is added. Now, as you can see, we're only supported by two screws in the front, but it's pretty solid. I'm, I'll figure out something to plug those holes. So let's put the lid back on it and see what happens. Oh, I've got it working. Miracle of miracles. You won't believe how long it took me to do this um, the problem was I was looking at the header upside down so I had the vol the uh, voltage the 5 volt VCC and the ground I thought they were at the top they were actually at the bottom so it didn't hurt anything thankfully and uh, the way I figured that out was using the old screen. Let me show you. So here's the old screen and it sits in the Ubitix in this orientation right here, just like that. So if we flip it over and 
add some light to the subject, you will be able to see that VCC ground DCC and one, two, three, T clock are in the opposite orientation for where I had them. But again, no harm was done. Everything worked out pretty well. So that's cool. So this new firmware is going to give us a lot. And I'm going to have to say a lot because at this point I don't know exactly. Um, one thing you'll notice is that the, uh, the S meter is kind of just stuck there. That's because this doesn't have an S meter yet. We will add one. Now up here, if you look, you can see we have this tuning step. So right now it's at 100 hertz. If I tap it, then we can go 500. But there's what I like, 1,000. Boom, right there. We can just tune it right there like that. Now, this is the weekend of the G5 solar storm. So things are kind of quiet. But you get the idea. This works here very nicely. There is a whole bunch of stuff for uh, CW. And now we also have this here, this IF shift. So if I hit the IF shift here, I can move my IF all over the place. A little filtering. We also have this uh, attenuation. You see I can attenuate the signal as well. We have RIT and we have SPLIT. We have all sorts of things here and I have not figured out the half of them because basically I just got this thing uh, done like this. And I'm just happy it's working to tell you the truth. So the next steps in this process are going to be we're going to put in um, the board that's going to give us an S meter and a power meter and I've got to learn a little bit more about this firmware but this uh, the next next town board I think I paid $28 for this firmware was free so the radio is starting to really turn into something that could be a very nice radio now I am still getting very low power out it's supposed to be 10 watts out the most I get on any channel is about five watts out but I'm not really worried about that because well for one thing I have the uh, XPA 125 here I could easily hook it up to that but hopefully my plan is to hook it up to something called the micro PA 50 plus as soon as I get enough money to buy one they're about hundred and ninety dollars but that'll be a nice addition to this and it'll make it really cool now one other thing that I'm hoping for and I believe this firmware has it is cat control so that we can control the radio from the computer which will allow us to do digital modes like FT8, FT4, um, JS8 call, RIDI, all of that kind of stuff, packet radio, pardon me. So that's coming up and also I need a way to get um, a, PP, a PTT signal out of here, that's push to talk. That's what your, your microphone switch is called, your PTT switch. So you see when I click this puts the radio into transmit mode but it does that by keying a relay back there and I need to get that signal to the relay out of here in order to be able to key an external amplifier not gonna be very hard and uh, that'll be coming up soon so guys I hope you enjoyed this if you did please give me a thumbs up feel free to comment share and don't forget to subscribe big thanks to all the patrons I wouldn't be here without you guys um, there are no sponsorships anymore on this channel. So patrons are pretty much single-handedly keeping us alive. Thank you and God bless all of you. That's it. I'm out. Peace.